we had people in various group chats with us, Shay, saying, here goes Tibbs. Look, Dante DiVincenzo played 50 <laughs> minutes. This is the game. <laughs> <laughs> that you want to play 50 minutes to get that number two seed. One of the most important basketball players of all time. Give him a giant statue. Give him a 10-foot statue. He should be big. Then Tory Craig throws it up and is like, I'm throwing it up to myself. Why would you do that? <laughs> this play is your fault. The fact that this play went viral, went everywhere, became a legendary Shackton moment. That's on you. The playoffs, playoff moments. It's all, at our, it's all at our feet. I'm so excited. This is my favorite time of the year. I had a whole thing I was going to do, like a very specific basketball-related question that I was going to ask you at the start of the show. All, every episode starts with me asking you some sort of question. And I had it all planned and written out and got my little notes ready to go. But immediately before we started recording, Zuri started talking about how much he loves to show Entourage. So I just want to ask Zuri about Entourage. Zuri, can you turn your mic on? Can you turn your mic on, please? Well, I can, but do we have to do this? We can. You got to turn your turn your camera on too. Turn the camera on. Turn the mic on. Oh my god! All right. What is it about Entourage that you love? Because you said this is a quote. I love Entourage. Are we at a stage where I can say I love Entourage, or do I have to still feel ashamed about it? What's your favorite season of Entourage? Season one, the, the the Queens Boulevard stuff. I like when they go back to New York. Why do I like the show? I am Queens Boulevard. Because you get to see Vince's family and all that. Um, why do I like the show? I'm born and raised in L.A. Um, it's a very L.A. show. It's a very Hollywood show. Uh, we work sort of in the business here. You kind of get to learn some things. Now, anyone anyone listening to this, it's very chauvinistic. It's it's uh, it perpetuates a lot of. You love that. You love that. <laughs> yeah, and, and that is great. That is very LA, and we love that about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's extremely LA. Um, uh, there's just you know, um, it's just the guys hanging out. Who doesn't like the guys hanging out? You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get to see the trajectory of Vince. He's a he's a he's a two bit actor. He, he goes from, a movie star. Yeah, he goes from like a movie star to still a movie star. And <laughs> really bad happens in his career. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'm all about stasis. I'm all about you know keeping it uh, keeping it normal. And um, and I don't know. It's just a nice referential show that that I do enjoy. Unless you hate it, if you're listening, you hate it. Then then I, it's, it's okay. Who's your favorite cameo Ooh. on Ooh. Entourage? Ooh. Ooh. Um, and let me just say, as a to just to, to pure transparency, um, I will, I've seen every episode of Entourage. I watched it in the moment because I, you know, it's like The Sopranos was the lead, and you end up just watching it. And uh, I can truly say I never liked the show, but I have seen every episode. I've, I've I've probably seen like eighty five percent of the episodes. I'm sure there's some that I've missed, but I've I'm, I've seen enough of it. I've seen enough of it to know that Vince eventually gets addicted to drugs, and also I I saw enough episodes to to know that my favorite part of the show of any season is when they're like, "Man, it's going so bad. What's going to happen now? I don't know. Everything's bad." And then a phone rings and it's like, hey, it's Marty Scorsese. Hey. You want to be the star of my new movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loved you in loved you in Castro, Vince. So. Uh, okay, hey, it's so, James yeah. Cameron. You want to be the star cameo. of yeah. my new movie? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And that's how easy it is. Uh, there's a lot of rapper cameos in Entourage. There's a, there's, a, there's a rapper named Saigon. I think he's from New York. And he does the ending credits. And I don't remember, and there's a song. I remember the song being really good. And I was I went to school in New York and I, was, and I like lived with people from Brooklyn and I remember they put me on Saigon and uh, we were watching. Okay, you ready, uh, Jason? You ready to start the show? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. From Wondery, I'm Shay Serrano, and I'm Jason Concepcion, and this is Six Trophies. Hello. I'm Jason Concepcion, and welcome to Six Trophies, a podcast series hosted by myself. Chase Serrano, in which we comb through all the NBA news from the past week and hand out six pop culture themed trophies for six basketball related activities. This episode, the playoffs and the play in are set to begin. Boban does a solid for the crowd, <laughs> and I love it. Allen Iverson gets a literal little trophy, all that and more. Let's hand out some trophies. <laughs> Thank you.
Wait, we didn't do the most obvious thing was was who who is who from the show in the six trophies universe. Let's say we've got me, oh, we've got yeah. Jason, we've got Zuri. Um Hector, we, there's a guy who works on the show named Hector who y'all will y'all will never hear from him, but he's here every single episode. So Hector can be the fourth person in the entourage thing. Who's who, Jason? You're Vince. Oh God. That's the one I'm, I didn't want to be. I'm E. Mm-hmm. Um Zuri is turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and tr- and th- man, th- things turn out great it for fits. turtle. Can we, just, can we just like? Yeah, he's like a multi-millionaire goes, at the end, right? Yeah, it goes well for turtle. Hector is James Cameron, <laughs> the director James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I was hoping I was going to be Johnny Drama. I was hoping that that's who I was. I don't know I if get, we I have a it. drama. <laughs> We got to figure out who our drama is. <laughs> we did two sets of trophies, the big trophies and the little trophies. The big trophies are first. These ones are the same every week. First up, the Denzel Washington and Training Day trophy. Given out to whoever it is. It's such an obvious joke here. First up, the Vince and uh, Entourage trophy. Given out to whoever it is who had the best <laughs> overall performance of the week. This week's winner, Selection Sunday, baby. Oh, it was fun. Oh, man. So Wasn't exciting to to know to know who's gonna. How many games were there on that? There was 152 games it on felt the last like it. day of I the think season. There were like eight games. Everything was in play. Teams were going were dropping from second to sixth to eighth to first. It felt like what fun. I was gonna say uh, some of the things that were at stake. You had three teams in the West battling for the one seed: the Thunder, the T Wolves, and the Denver Nuggets. They were all 56 and 25, which I believe has never happened before. Uh, in the East, you had the Bucks, Cavs, and Knicks, each vying for as high as second and as low as sixth. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of positioning. Where did everybody want to kind of uh, end up? You had the Orlando Magic, the Indiana Pacers, and the 76ers, all with the same record, 46 and 35. Uh, it, it was super, super, super exciting and a lot of chaos and things really didn't uh, begin to clear up until, you know, halfway through the uh, the Eastern Conference games, the Knicks Bulls game, uh, and and the Bucks and the Cavs playing. What? <laughs> so we we briefly talked about this in our little group chat about the about the Knicks. How did you feel about how things turned? Maybe we we should table set first. What what happened with the Knicks? Okay. So there was a lot of chatter because the Knicks could the Knicks could have finished as high as second. There were a lot of permutations, which, to be honest, I'm not going to mention because I don't even know them all. But the Knicks, at a certain point, because of the uh, the results of the um, Milwaukee and Cleveland Cavaliers games, uh, it was clear that the Knicks could, if they wanted, uh, lose so that they would. Uh, end up playing, uh, they would drop down a third, end up playing the uh, Indiana Pacers, I believe, uh, rather than play the winner of the uh, the play-in game, meaning that they would face either a revitalized Philadelphia 76ers with Joel Bede, who won their last eight games on the trot after Joel came back, or a Miami Heat team that whatever their uh, record and performances said during the season, you always fear during the playoffs. They're scary in the playoffs. They're, They're scary, scary in the playoffs. The playoffs. And this, so there was like significant voices that were like, they should, they should tank for uh, the three or, uh, but I love, I love that they didn't. Here, because first of all, two decades of bad basketball, the fans deserve home court advantage for two rounds of the playoffs if they go that far. And I understand like it's going to be a, a a battle in that first round series. Uh, And two, tanking for position is for two types of teams. One, a team that's like a veteran team that they know what they have and they just need to get in, like your Golden State Warriors, your Lakers, uh, those type of teams who are like, you know what, let's just get in and we can make some noise because nobody wants to play us in a seven-game series. No one wants to play us in a one-game series in a in a play-in tournament. And we know the type of players that we have. They're legends. We've got a lot of stability and we just need to get in. And two, cowards. 
Cowards who are afraid. <laughs> Teams who are afraid, who are shaking in their boots about, oh my God, what are our matchup? <laughs> and teams who shouldn't do that are teams Unlike who are unlike Boston, unlike Denver, that have a pedigree that need to the playoffs are for measuring yourself against the best and finding out how good you are. And that's what the Knicks need to do. And whether that happens in the first round, the second round or wherever, they need to play the best to see how far away they are. And I and I welcome the challenge. Are, could we lose to the 76ers or the Heat? A absolutely. That could happen. We could also beat them. I, I, I feel reasonably confident that we could re really play these teams. And I think more importantly, it's important to know if we can play them, if we can hang with them, if we can beat them. And the only way to know that is to play them. You, there's no sneaking through the back door of the playoffs. I hate that shit. A rare instance when I agree with everything that you're saying in totality. <laughs> I'm 100% in agreement with you. Tanking to for a playoff position is just a fundamentally stupid thing. It's such a stupid thing because if you lose, you look like an idiot. You look like an absolute idiot if you're like, man, I really I really hope we get to play. I want to play Indiana. And then Indiana, and then Indiana comes in <laughs> and Tyrese Halliburton goes nuts and you're home five yes. games later. Like, what the fuck just happened? The, like, it's the not, bulletin don't do board that. material potential is explosive. It's explosive. Don't, don't do that. You don't want to do that. Because if you play, if you play the, the Sixers and you lose just on merit, fine, whatever. You lost to the six. You lost to the team with a guy who's averaging more points per game than minutes per game when the he MVP. was rolling. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. it's fine. But if you tank and lose, now you look like... <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, now you look real dumb. You look real, real dumb. You look so dumb. Yeah, I love that the Knicks did this. I love it. And, you know, who would expect anything else? I had uh, We had people in various group chats with us, Shay, saying, here goes Tibbs. Look, Dante DiVincenzo played 50 <laughs> minutes. This is the game. <laughs> <laughs> that you want to play 50 minutes to get that number two seed. The playoffs started that last game of the season for the Knicks. That was an important game. I have no problem with guys playing big minutes in a game like that. Tanking for playoff position. We both hate it. We both hate it. Don't do that. Don't do that. The, how did you feel? The, so the Cavs did it. The Cavs the very Cavs. clearly, obviously. In the did most it. embarrassing, pathetic you're, fashion, they did you're it. You're up. You're up. They're up you go like into the 10. fourth quarter and you just take all, all it. And then they say after the game, oh, we had a plan that we were going to play our. Get out of here. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. The plan was to tank. That was the plan. The plan was we're going to put our non starters in and then we're going to lose the game and then we're going to get a seating that we feel is more preferential for they, us. They, they took, to your point, they took all the players out. They put all of their bigs in, including Tristan Thompson, <laughs> with one. Not even uh, with one, I guess, guard, more like a wing, Imani Bates, who's uh, 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 no disrespect to the G League and players on a two-way. He's a G League player on a two-way. That was their air quotes guard. And of course they lost the game. And folks, what does this say about your team? <laughs> <clears throat> what does it Man. say about your confidence in your team? And by the way, Orlando could beat them. Orlando they're, they're, is a tough physical team that can absolutely beat them. They they do it so that they can play Orlando in the first round. And immediately, immediately what happened? The Cleveland Cavaliers have have garnered so much goodwill all season of like this is a fun team, it's a young team. They're they're uh, they feel unexpected. Great. I hope they make some noise in the playoffs. And then they tank in the last game of the season to get matched up against the Magic. And immediately everyone is like, Well, fuck, the Magic better. Paolo. Go get them, Paolo. Please, please send them home. They wanted to lose. Let them lose now. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they got out physical by the Knicks last playoffs, and now they're matched up against a young, very physical team that can absolutely punch them in the gut. I, I, I can't wait for this series. Is a good. Is a good. They played four times. It's a good regular season series, two games apiece. They both won. Um, in each game, it felt like somebody else was was stepping up and doing like a, a good. Paolo is, of course, incredible. I, I'm, I'm rooting for the magic. Let it be known. I need the magic to win this series. <laughs> I want instant karma. You tank in the playoffs for playoff position. Excuse me. You tank for playoff position. I want instant karma. I need them out of here. I need them out of here. 
Shouts to the- Max. Shouts to Max Struess, who said, I want to win after this game <laughs> when he was asked about it. No further comment necessary. A great season from Max Struess. Yeah. Great season. Averaged uh, career highs in pretty much every single category. Great job, Max. Way to go, Max. Next trophy. The Lauren Hill, you might win some, but you just lost one trophy. Give it out to the player team who had the worst performance of the week. This week's winner, I feel like we say their name so many times in this category, the Bucks again. <laughs> The Bucks. You, oh, recap it. Recap it, Jason. So I think it's a tough, you know, it's been a tough uh, few days for the Bucks. They were extremely shaky down the stretch with some really, really troubling losses to teams that were kind of not, were shells of themselves and not trying to win. Then uh, Giannis goes down with a calf injury, uh, and the Bucks have just announced. Uh, that they're expecting to miss him for the opening of their first round matchup. And their first round matchup is against the Pacers, a team who not only had their number over the during the season, beating them four out of five times, but that's the team that stole Giannis's game ball. <laughs> it's a lot of bad. We we advocated several weeks ago for a Bucks. Pacers playoff series, like please get. I'm excited for it, but it's not. It's gonna not be the same without Giannis. Yeah, without Giannis, hopefully he can come back healthy. It seems like he avoided the more serious injury, but of course, you know, it remains to be seen what what shape he's going to be in when he does reach the court again. I feel like after after watching him snap his leg in half in the playoffs (laughs) when they and then come back and win a championship and then be like i'm fine (laughs) and like nothing happened like what's like i I believe i believe in Giannis. i think he's got we need him they need robocop legs they need him they can't win without him uh one question before we move on before we go what happens if they lose what happens to 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 damian lillard who we talked about before this is your you're on a team that should or could win a championship for the first time in your career and now if they lose in the first round, uh-oh. Uh, I uh-oh. guess, you know, I, I think Dame... Uh-oh. This, this is, Dame's season shows you uh-oh. the importance of having friends, particularly in the media, and being liked. Because Dame's been bad. <laughs> He's been not good. And certainly, even when he was good, when the, in the good patches over the season, was not up to his previous level. And really, nobody's talking about it or have only just started talking about, gosh, Davis looked like he kind of didn't want to be there all season. So (laughs) I'm surprised. I'm surprised as you and, uh, you know, Dame time, this is Dame time. And especially if they're going to be missing Giannis, Dame has got to saddle up. This has got to be his time right now. And I hope we see that. Next trophy. The Dominic Toretto, I live my life a quarter mile at a time trophy. Giving out to a person or team who made a short-term decision with no regard for future consequence. This week's winner, <laughs> the King of Kings, Boban! 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 Yeah! Everybody's getting chicken. He did Soon it. the people, Boban! He did it. Boban is at the free throw line. It's the fourth quarter. They have, they have, many arenas have the thing of if the opposing team misses, uh, a player misses two free throws in the fourth quarter, back-to-back free throws. Everybody gets free Chick-fil-A, a Chick-fil-A sandwich. <laughs> Boban misses the first one. Everybody realizes it's in play. Here we go. They all, they all start screaming at him. He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. He realizes, oh, that's what they're screaming about. If I miss another one, everybody gets free Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. He starts telling the crowd, I got you, I got you. And then very clearly misses the free throw on purpose as he lets the ball go, headed toward the left side of the rim, just points at the sky like Larry Bird winning the three-point contest. (laughs) Boban does the same thing. One finger in the sky, everybody gets chicken. The announcers go crazy. The crowd goes crazy. Boban just continues his run of being maybe the most likable role player the NBA has seen in 15 years. What a tremendous moment. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And of course, we have to say Boban is a Clipper legend, doing a solid for the fans here. Who could forget his wonderful friendship with Tobias Harris on that team? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will just say, (laughs) the other thing that I love about this is this is the most brilliant 
cover for point shaving. So good. You, it's you so can, smart. You, it's so fucking so smart. smart. You go, hey, bet, you know, like, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the free throw parlay is, right? And then knowing that you're going to do it, come in and, and, and <laughs> say, well, I'm going to get you the chicken. <laughs> it's, the per- it's the perfect cover. Do you think Adam Silver went, Boban, that was really fun. Don't ever do it again. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Don't you ever. Don't ever. And I know Jonte Porter was like, fuck. fuck I why didn't I think why of that? Did I do, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible point shaving. Just in broad daylight. Just right under in the, plain view. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to miss this on purpose, everyone. And everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. Just, man, Boban. What a Remember when he showed up in John Wick 3? He gets killed with say, a book. John, I was about John to say Wick John, Wick, John Wick legend. <laughs> Boban John Mariano. Wick legend. Boban putting a big old foot in the, in the John Wick's chest. That's another example of bad karma right there. He's, he decided he was going to go ahead and just go ahead and try to kill John Wick early before it was time. Yeah, Boban you had can't to put, do that. Boban had to, uh, John Wick had to put him in a box. Orlando, please put the calves in a box. <laughs> Put him in a box. <laughs> Beat his ass with with books. If that would have been a that would have been a 1988 Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and he killed somebody with a book, you absolutely would have gotten the reading is fundamental. Yes. kind of kind of one liner <laughs> afterward. <laughs> afterward. <laughs> Next trophy, the Daniel Plain View. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my boy trophy, which is given out to a player team. We're temporarily giving up on. This week's winner, Cavs Magic Series. I, 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 I can't wait to watch this series. And I'm sure the Cavs and Magic fans feel the same way. And I think we're the only people. We're the only that, ones. We're the only ones that want to watch it. I can't ones. wait to see where they play this series because I feel like it's going to be a true TV special. <laughs> 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 Somebody one time said uh, they were going to play it on the, the when you're filling up your car at the gas station yeah, and there's like a thing playing right there. That's the only place you go watch it is that shell. <laughs> They're going to play it in cabs <laughs> when, you, when you get it. On the little screen in <laughs> the on back. On the little screen in the cab. <laughs> everybody in Cleveland is excited. Everybody in Orlando is excited. And then me and Jason and nobody else. That's it. Nobody. The, the Which is crazy. People- this. This is a marquee matchup because again, they tanked, they tanked, they wanted this matchup. I I would also extend this to like the, like, there's no way around it. The East play-in does not have the kind of star power that the West, you know, the West play-in, it's Lakers, Lakers Warriors potentially on a collision course. And then, you know, in the East, it's heat, uh, heat. Sixers, okay, good. And then Bulls, Hawks, you feel like is going to get lost in the mix. Scrappy Bulls team, Hawks, Trey Young back in the mix. Uh, all stuff I'm excited for, but you can just tell that like ESPN ABC is going to go crazy with the West play-ins. Have you ever been to Orlando? Yeah. Have you been to Cleveland? Yeah. I've, 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 I went to Orlando one time and I liked it. Because they it. had a, I, at the gas station, they had a, a snack that I liked. It was like a, it was like a peanut butter cookie covered in chocolate. And I was like, this is delicious. Let I'm me ask you this. Orlando. Does it count if you spent most of your time like at the parks? Like if I'm at Disney World for most of the time, does that count as seeing Orlando? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that counts. Okay. That's like the main, that's like the main thing in Orlando, right? There's, there's several other, yeah, there's others, but like, yes, parks are the, 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 are the, the main the thing in Orlando. The theme park thing. Yeah. I've never been to Disneyland or Disney World. I think my mom and dad took me when I was a baby. I hate I'm sure there's a picture somewhere, but I don't remember any of that. I want to go. My mom did that to me too. She's like, I took you to Disney World. I was like 10 months. I don't know anything about it. Oh, wait. I'm lying. We went. I went with Laramie one time when we were, it was our anniversary. It was our 10 year anniversary. (laughs) Did you just forget your anniversary? I just forgot. (laughs) I forgot because we were in Europe. We went to we went to Paris, oh. or, you know what I mean. Oh, so you went to you went to Disney World Paris. Yeah, over there, okay. and it was great. Disney World with no kids, so much fun, so <laughs> much fun. I recommend it. Do that. Next trophy, the Chief Keef. That's that shit I don't like. Trophy, which is given out to a player or a team who does something, <laughs> and we just don't like it. We don't like it. I don't like it. 
this week's winner, the tiny Allen Iverson statue. I don't like it. I don't like it. I have a now, rebuttal, but talk about why you don't like it. Okay. Now, I understand this is a thing that they do there. There's like a walkway of legends. The Legends Walk is what it's called, I believe. So it's like Dr. J, Charles Barkley, Alan I Like they've got the smaller versions of the statues and you walk past them. And I imagine in real life when you're walking through that, that's cool. But you know what would be even cooler than a bunch of tiny statues arranged like that? Is a bunch of normal size statues. Just do them normal. Why are you doing tiny? <laughs> why are you doing tiny statues for anybody, first of all? But especially for Allen Iverson, the the coolest basketball player who has ever lived. The coolest. It truly was the coolest. The coolest ever. The only person you could argue against him is Dr. J, who also, by the way, has a tiny statue. The coolest basketball player, one of the 10 most influential basketball players of all time. A cult hero. Yeah. A national hero. Yeah. Like an icon. Absolutely uh, an icon. Somebody who has spent... Seemingly every day of his retirement, celebrating and championing other players. He has never been like, I'm Allen Iverson. Look what he's always like, oh man, Kobe was so great. Oh man, Shaq was incredible. Luca, Yao Ming Luca was incredible. Luca, Luca yeah. I love, he's do, with the old, with the older players, with the younger players. All he has ever been is just grace and class. Entourage. He said he loved Entourage. <laughs> This is this is one of the most important basketball players of all time. Give him a giant statue. Give him a 10-foot statue. He should be big. Why is he small? Why is he getting a lowercase statue? It's the answer, not the short answer. Not the Is that a Zuri booming? Booming me for that. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't right. like it. Here's my here's my rebuttal. Okay, go. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't deny that the statue is on the smaller side, and I do wish it was bigger, along with the statues of Charles Barkley, Will Chamberlain, Mo Cheeks, Billy Cunningham, Dr. J, et cetera, et cetera. All the other legends there of Philadelphia, they should all have bigger statues, including Allen Iverson, whose statue should be big. That said, to me, the real mistake was unveiling the statue at the practice facility where you couldn't see it in the context of the walk and all the other statues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that, just putting it in isolation with just people around it, and you see this little-ass statue, and you, you don't realize that they're all that size, it made it com That is really the mistake, and that made it comical, and that caused all the commentary. I think you have to unveil it in Legends Walk. You do mm -hmm. the whole event, Allen Iverson takes his place amongst the legends, Moses Malone, Bobby Jones, et cetera. And then you unveil it there so everybody can see, oh, all the other, this is the same general size as all the other statues, and you don't have this problem. That's my rebuttal. That, to me, is the, is the sin, is, is unveiling it separate from all the other legends. <laughs> Even still, man, it's got to be big. I, I it's agree it's got to be bigger. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think, I think the, the statue size should be indicative of your, your like the, Wait, it's a, li it's a literal no, version of the shadow you cast. The no, shadow you that you cast do that. over the NBA. Your statue Come should be on. that big. You Your can't. statue should be big. So Wilt would have like a massive statue. Mo Cheek's statue would come up to like Wilt's ankle. Like you yeah, can't yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, no, <laughs> you can. You can is the thing. And all it right. would be incredible. You'd be like, all right, here's here's the Wilt Chamberlain statue. It's 27 feet tall. Here's the Allen Iverson statue. It's 29 feet tall. Great. Here's the Kobe statue. Like then it becomes, all right, how big are we making these statues? Like this should be, they should do that. It would be so much better. It would be so much better. Okay. Well, I, I kind of disagree, but um, but but I, I just because of logistics. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> uh, but I agree it should be bigger. Uh, well, let me, I, I want to give it one more bit of props. It looks okay. like him. Here's my issue with a lot of the Lakers statues. Oh, they man. They don't look like the guy. Uh, they don't the look Shaq like the one guy. I don't think looks like him. The magic Kobe's one I don't doesn't. think looks like him. Allen's statue looks like him, at least. It does look like him. 
It does look like him. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Next trophy. The Step Brothers Catalina Wine Mixer Trophy. Giving out to the thing we're most excited about for the upcoming week. Oh, baby, it's time. The playoffs are here. This week's winner, the playoffs. Playoffs, playoff predictions, playoff moments. It's all at our, it's all at our feet. I can't believe we made it. I can't believe we made, we made it. it. We're here. I'm so excited. This is my favorite time of the year. Oh, my God. The first round of the playoffs when it's like three games a night every it's night. Just, oh, oh, I love it. Yes, yes. Let's do some predictions. Go. I'm going to give Let's you some go. categories for the playoffs and the end of season, and you give me some winners, all right? Big one, first one. Who wins the championship? I think it has to. I think. Uh, I'm going to pick Boston. They've been, they had a a dominant regular season. They should absolutely cruise through the East playoffs, like 2001 Lakers style, dropping like a game, maybe two games, Mm -hmm. uh, depending on if they play Philly or the Heat in the first round, whatever. But I just think that they, I, I, I think that they've been so dominant, so good all season. And I think that they will win. I that is who I picked as well. I kind of want them to win though. I I want them to win one. You can't really like hate a basketball team until they win a championship. Like they have to they have to be the winners. Does they it, have to but be does like, it count? <laughs> yeah. Does it count if I still hate them from 2008? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're on <laughs> we're on year 16. Oh, yeah. is, I'm running I'm running out of steam. I need a re up. I need a re up. All right, finals MVP then. Uh, Jalen Brown. Ooh, I'm going Tatum. Brown, surprising pick. Yeah. Surprising yeah. pick. Uh, league MVP. I, I think Jokic is going to win, but I think it also should be Jalen Brunson. <laughs> <laughs> <I th-> <laughs> Jalen Brunson, the MVP of my life, of my soul, of my heart, my brain, every piece of my body. Jalen Brunson, you are my number one. I think it's going to be Luca, but it should be okay. SGA. It should okay. be SGA. They Best got they locked number up the number the, one seed. Yeah. The number one seed. You got to give it to SGA. Defensive player of the year. Don't do it. Don't say it. I, 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 I've already made my stance known. I think Wemby is – I think it's got to be Gobert. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I think he's been the linchpin of, of an amazing defense, number one defense throughout most of the season. I don't know where they ended up. Uh, and transformed a squad that was not known for defense into a stout defensive team. And I think Wemby will get there, but not yet. I know who you picked, so just tell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Wemby. We're not the, the award isn't for the best defensive team. It's the best defensive player. And guess what? Led the league in blocks. The entire league in blocks. Guess what? More blocks and more steals. Then the last nine Defensive Player of the Year winners by a large margin. It's not even close. He should be the def- he's the best defensive player. Twenty in the twenty two no, wins. We're, this, I'm not giving him the trophy for how many okay. wins did All you right. get in the okay. season. I'm saying on defense, that's the guy that you don't want to try to shoot when he's around. Gobert. They look at Gobert like the way cats look at cartoon fish. They just. <laughs> <laughs> Wimby, Wimby, they will dribble all the way back out past the three point line, pass the ball to somebody else, be like, no, nah, never mind, I don't want to do it. You got to give the, he's defensive player of the year. Who do you got for six man? Six man of the year. Uh, you know, it's tough because the Knicks have been so injury hit and they don't have any six men, but I'm going to pick Miles McBride because I want to. And I know that that's not right. And I know that's not the, the, the thing that people want. Or the, and, and then he's not even going to be on any lists, I bet. But I'm picking him because honestly, hey. Deuce's Deuce Deuce do it. carried us. Do it. His scoring was so necessary, and we needed it. <laughs> you do it. If Jonte Porter can place a thousand bets on games he's playing, <laughs> in, he can, yes. you can pick a guy you want. <laughs> Give me Malik Monk. I like the Monk. Give the Monk yeah, yeah. his trophy, Coach right. of the Year. Uh. Well, it it will be Mark Dagnall, and he deserves yeah. it. But it's, yeah, yeah, that's but my it, pick. Again, the the coach of my heart, Tom Thibodeau. I think he's done an incredible <laughs> job. Uh, it's, it's you know he's got fifty percent of the Knicks winning seasons of the last twenty years. Tom Thibodeau, he's transformed the organization. Shouts to Mark Dagnall, though, and your bowl haircut. Give me one wild prediction for the playoffs or for the end of the season. <clears throat> and then we're moving on. Okay, my one 
wild prediction. Okay, you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sorry, play some bombs and some fire and some gunshots. What is that? <laughs> Warriors in the it. Western Conference I they, Finals. I think they make it. I think they make it to the Western Conference Finals. Oh my god! I would, that would make me so happy. That would make me so incredibly happy if that were to happen. Oh my god, that would be great. Do and it. I have one more. I have one more wild prediction. Okay. Uh, the West play-in Lakers Pelicans Kings Warriors will have the most crooked refs in the history of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> they, the Kings and the Pelicans, y'all don't have no chance. No chance. Zero. The fix will be in. I'm so sad that everything fell apart for the Kings this season. Yeah, they just, just looking so good. And then just, yeah. uh, tough break. My one wild prediction they're not going to give Wimby defensive player of the year. We, they should. <laughs> they should. <laughs> that's, that's, that's incredibly wild that they won't do that. And they're not going to do that. Who, whoever's in charge of like assigning credentials for voting on awards, like in the NBA, they're listening right now. And they're like, would well, not these do two you guys. want, do you want to be a voter? <laughs> do you, do you I don't, legit? I don't, don't want to be, no, I don't want to be, be a voter. I don't, I know I don't a couple of voters voter. and they're so stressed out. Yeah, I don't know. Because I wouldn't do it. I would just be like, well, I like I like Trey Jones. I like Trey Jones. That's my MVP. Give it to Trey. <laughs> Give it to Jeremy Sohan. Let's do it. Most improved player. <laughs> no uh, no journalistic integrity. Just all Zero. bias for me. All bias. You want to do the little trophies? Let's do it. Yes. Let's do the little trophies. These ones change each week and are situation specific. They're for the smaller storylines we want to mention, but don't need to get all the way into. My first little trophy, the Danny Ocean in Ocean's Eleven. Ten ought to do, don't you think? You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more trophy. <laughs> God, what an incredible moment. To USA Basketball, which has begun finalizing... They're finalizing Let's their go. 2024 Paris roster. They Let's got LeBron. Go. They got Steph. They got KD. You think we need one more? They got Ant. You think we need one more? They got Tatum. You think we need one more? They got Embiid. All right, we'll get one more. Oh, my God. The big dogs are coming, baby. They said, the fuck the FIBA World dogs. Cup. Yeah. Fuck the FIBA World Cup. Here we come. We want, we want the gold medal. My first little trophy, and in this scene, Brad Pitt will speak, the Achilles... <laughs> In Troy, <laughs> immortality, take it, it's yours. Trophy two, to Tory Craig for causing an all-time shacked in the fool moment. <laughs> so funny. By attempting to dunk his own lob. Now, Andre Drummond got the, got the block, fast break starts, Tory Craig on the break, Andre Drummond behind him, you've seen the clip, surely. Then Tory Craig... The thing to do here is you reward <laughs> your big man. That's uh -huh. what it's yeah. been in basketball since time immemorial. Your big gets makes a defensive play to start the break. You reward him if he's trailing, and he was. Then Torrey Craig throws it up and is like, I'm throwing it up to myself. Why would you do that? <laughs> this play is your fault. The fact that this play went viral, went everywhere, became a legendary Shackton moment, that's on you. Why did you try to dunk your own lob? Because immortality was there, baby. It was his. <laughs> he he wanted to he, take it. He seized it. Man, let me tell you, in Troy, when Brad Pitt shows up to Eric Bana's house and Eric Bana goes out there to fight him, and they just watched every... Yeah. You've got archers all across the top of your castle watching your guy get fucking drug. Shoot an that arrow. Was that was some messed Shoot up an shit. arrow. Just dragging him, him around. <laughs> Oh my god! I would have been so mad if I was Eric. Bond. You're just letting him beat the shit out of me. You're all you all got weapons. <laughs> it's one guy. There we go again. All right, my next little trophy: the Warden Norton in the Shawshank Redemption. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. One big damn conspiracy, <laughs> and everyone's in on it. Trophy <laughs> to that ref who was disappointed that Embiid hit an and one. During the Sixers Magic game, this is an incredible camera angle showing us downward <laughs> yeah. at Embiid 
completing the play, ref in the background, watch the ball just like gets knocked up in the air, call the foul. The ball somehow drops in and the ref looks so disappointed. So like you can't watch that and go, well, everything's on the up and up right now. It just, I don't know. Like there's, I don't want to say that there's something wrong, but watching that clip felt like this is, this is, I don't like it. (laughs) It's a conspiracy. (laughs) My next little trophy is the black eyed peas, my humps. What you going to do with all that (laughs) junk trophy to Josh Hart. So uh, this is from the uh, roommates podcast in which uh, Jalen Brunson basically references a proposal picture that uh, Josh Hart posted to social media in which he's uh, kneeling on, he's on one knee, he's presenting the ring to his uh, beautiful fiance, now wife, and all of the comments were about how big Josh's ass looks. (laughs) 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 That's a fun group. That is a yeah. fun group. <laughs> My last little trophy, the Happy Gilmore and Happy Gilmore. Hey, it's about time. I mean, I just couldn't get the ball in the hole. I wanted to, but I just couldn't do it, trophy. <laughs> to Delano Banton, who set an NBA record when he went 0 for 15 from three in the Blazers-Kings game and then got kicked out for a flagrant two foul, uh, presumably because he was mad that he had just gone over 15 in the game. <laughs> oh, tough break. <laughs> tough oh, break for Banton. Oh, over 15 is insane. It's insane. He went <laughs> over 11 and was like four more tries. <laughs> yeah, just four more tries. <laughs> I respect it. Uh, my final little trophy of the NBA, the regular season, is the DMX Get It Me Dog trophy to the New York Knicks. 50 wins, the two seed, doing all of that with so much of, the, of your starting lineup in, in bandages. OG Ananobi for most of his time there. Julius Randle's been out since January. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein on a minutes restriction. Mitchell Robinson missing most of the season. Uh, it's a great achievement. Uh, and they should be proud of what they've done, and I can't wait to watch them in the playoffs. I'm so just completely surprised that you got another trophy in for the Knicks. I respect it. I respect it, Jason. Thank you. I appreciate that. We did it again, Jason. Another perfect episode. No flaws. Of course! No flaws. We close every episode just by saying the names of underappreciated old basketball players with no context at all while the theme music carries us out. I'm Shay Serrano. That's Jason Concepcion. Producer Zuri in the shadows, making the noises. See y'all next Wednesday. I really like Happy Gilmore, and when I watched it, I just started rewatching Adam okay. Sandler movies. So I'm doing all Adam Sandler movies instead of players. Okay. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gil- <laughs> uh, Derek Harper. Nick's legend, Derek Harper. Billy Madison. College football and Knicks legend Charlie Ward. (laughs) Uh, Punch Drunk Love. I love Punch Drunk Love. (laughs) Uh, Republican Party legend, Blazer legend, Knicks legend, Chris Dudley. (laughs) Bobby Boucher and the Waterboy. Oh, Bobby Boucher. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Legend Hubert Davis, uh, Sonny Colfax, and uh, Big Daddy. <laughs> Why did I say Punch Drunk Love? I should have said the character. Isn't he? Uh, Barry Egan. <laughs>